My Father by Manuel del Toro As a child, I always feared that my father was a coward. Not because I saw him run, being chased by a machete, as I saw many times Paco the Chicken and Kino Pascual, but because he was so different from the dads of my classmates. In that neighborhood school, where courage was the supreme virtue, I drank the bitterness of being the son of a man that didn't even use a knife. How I envied my friends that told time and again nonstop the doings of their fathers. Perico Lugo was left for dead in a ditch with 23 stab wounds. Felipe Chaveta sported a beautiful wound from his temple to his chin. My father, my poor father, didn't even have a single scar on his body. I took great pain to verify while we swam in the river that Saturday afternoon, as was custom, when we went to toss tobacco stalks. Now I followed his footsteps, sinking my bare feet in the warm dust of the road, tooting my trumpet. This was a poppy stem that my father, with gentle skill for all things small, had transformed into a trumpet just by making a longitudinal incision. Passing by the Aurora Bar, he told me, Let's go in here. I don't have any cigars for tonight. From shock, I swallowed the trumpet a little, because Dad never went into the Aurora, the hangout spot for all the brave men of the neighborhood. There they played cards, drank rum, and was almost always a stabbing. Some machete slashes would turn strong arms into stumps. Some long slashes from a razor would take out intestines and send a man to his death. After saying good evening, Dad asked for cigars. He was choosing them one by one with the delight of a smoker, feeling them with his fingers and lifting them to his nose to smell their odor. I was glued to the zinc-lined counter. I tried to hide between my dad's pant legs. I didn't dare play my trumpet, seeming that would offend the bar patrons. Even my breath might. I looked stealthily from one corner of the bodega to the other. Lying on a pile of rice sacks, I saw Jose the one-eyed man eat bread and sausage, throwing the skins to the mangy dog that caught them in the air, making a dry sound with his teeth. At the side table, playing with dirty cards, were Nolasco Ribera, Perico Lugo, Chus Maruso, and a black man that I didn't know. On a board placed on a barrel, others played dominoes. A group of onlookers closely followed the games. Everyone drank rum. It was the black man that started the provocation. He came up to Dad and offered the bottle that everyone had drank from. Take a drink, mister, said the black man. Thanks, but I don't drink, said my dad. Oh, so you despise me because I'm a nobody, said the black man. It's not that, friend. It's that I can't drink. Take one for me, said dad. This stick is for you. I'm going to hit you on the head with it, said the black man. He tried but couldn't. The shove from dad threw him against the barrel of mackerel fish. He got up, stunned from the hit in the rum, and holding his belt with two hands said, You're lucky, old man, because I'm unarmed. All right, loan him a knife. I couldn't believe it, but it was Dad who had said it. Just remembering it, I get goosebumps all over my body. Twenty hands sank into their dirty shirts, worn out pants, into their muddy boots, in every place that a man knows to keep a weapon. Twenty hands silently offered the true Puerto Rican countryman three types of knives. A house knife, a dagger with three edges, a curved sevillana. Friend, pick the one you like best, Dad said. Look, mister, I'm brave, but you are braver than me, said the black man, and he slowly left the store. Dad paid for the cigars, said good evening, and we left. Going down the stairs, I heard the one-eyed man say with admiration, There goes a real man. I played my poppy trumpet with triumph. My God, I couldn't wait for Monday to come to tell the boys.